What's up everybody? Today I'm here in Sonora, Mexico on the Sea of Cortez. I uh, tried fishing yesterday and I struggled. I got stung by a stingray, hooked myself in the face a couple times. Um, it's been a struggle and I only caught one little tiny fish. I'm finally out here this morning. We're about to leave town, but I'm at the hotel. I just want to fish uh, on camera just to see if I get lucky. I see some fish rising out here. I don't know if they're within my reach, but uh, let's see what I can find. Hopefully I can pick up some fish today. Lots of fish activity out here. There's pelicans fishing. I don't know what they are. I saw them yesterday. Oh, there's something. Oh, well, a stingray cruising by right here at my feet. A little bugger. That's what got me yesterday, right in the heel. And let me tell you, that was pretty painful. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's another stingray. There's all kinds of them down here. Well, look at that. You know, the one saving grace from yesterday is I got a lot of casting practice in. I think I'm pretty comfortable out to about 60, 70 feet now, as long as I have plenty of room to cast. But yesterday I tried fast stripping, which everyone recommended. I tried double-handed stripping, slow stripping, irregular stripping. I tried pretty much all the flies I used. The one fish I caught was a, I don't know what it was, some kind of spotted grouper looking thing. It's very small, maybe four inches long. I'm fishing with the chartreuse clouser. And uh, let's try it. I shouldn't uh, despair. It's high tide right now. Yesterday I fished at low tide, so maybe that's some of my problem. <sighs> I can confirm that when you're fishing all day in salt that your fingers do get wrecked. The salt water just makes your fingers crack and start bleeding. So I bled from my fingers, I bled from my forehead, and I bled from my heel where the stingray got me. Sun's not yet on the water. It's beautiful out here. Having a great time, despite the, the struggles with the fishing yesterday. Mm. 
I fished different kinds of beaches. I did two sandy beaches. And then I fished kind of a, I don't know, looks like it was kind of like here. It was like the mouth of an estuary. And it's kind of at a point to the mouth of it. And that's where I was able to get pretty close to the fish that I could actually sight fish to. I know I was able to reach them, but I could not get one to eat. There's a big school of fish out there working well out of my reach. But you never know what's cruising by. Like I said, there's a stingray right there. I don't know if you can see it, probably not on camera. It's just that black blob moving by. Those little mother beeps. That took like an hour to calm down the pain. I had shower, or I had blood on my towel this morning in the shower. The, the cut they made on my heel was pretty, pretty narrow. It's also been fun learning to use a stripping basket. That's pretty much required. I mean, if you want to cast it in distance out here. Oh, it's so cool watching the wildlife. Pelicans diving for fish that I can't quite reach. But this video is basically sponsored by Colton Fly Rods. It's a company many in California probably haven't heard of. They specialize mainly in saltwater gear, though they do make freshwater gear. But I was looking for a good saltwater outfit and uh, talked to my buddy Mike Pawalski from Familiar Waters TV because he's got, done a lot of saltwater fishing in his day. And whoops, that was a terrible cast. And he told me about Colton. He said they have the best drag on their reels in the business. So I'm like, that sounds good. And I check them out. The prices are affordable. And I call up Bob and he talks to me for an hour, gives me all kinds of advice. He was a super awesome dude. So if you want like that personal service touch with some excellent quality gear, I got the his rod, which is called the uh, the Trade Winds XS. This is a nine foot, nine weight. And then I've got the 10, 11, 10 to 12 weight, I believe. Reel from them, and this thing is a beast. It's awesome, it's got a four inch arbor. The drag is super smooth and it goes up to, I believe, 14 pounds. I apologize if I'm butchering the specs. I'll put them on the screen if, if they're wrong, but uh, it's beautiful gear, cast great. And he hooked me up for this video, so gave me a really good price. Ooh, watch out, grebe. Oh, shoot. I just casted my line right on top of that grebe there. He didn't seem to care that much, though. And for the line, I'm using a Tropical Lines from Wolf Fly Lines. That was also a recommendation from Bob. He said they make the best salt lines in biz. A brand I actually, to be honest, had never heard of before. I believe this is their Bermuda Taper. This thing is a tank. It's like a rocket. I guess being so used to casting a mono rig, having a big heavy fly line is a big difference, but it's fun. It's fun casting fly line, shooting it out there. All right, going with the the pink clouser. Talk about my leader for a little bit. A little bit at uh, the base, I've got 30 pound floral. In the middle, I've got 20, and then for my tippet, I've got 15 pound floral. It's kind of the first time I've ever tied with and fished using uh, brass eyes. And these are from Montana Fly Company and they have, you know, like holographic eye stickers on them. And uh, after a little bit of fishing, the eyes come off. I don't know, is that normal, guys? Is there a better brand? I know others are, are painted on. 
I don't know what to think about that. It's a little dumb. Fishing has been very tough here in Mexico. We went north, stayed in Puerto Penasca, and we picked a beach on the map, and it happened to be low tide. It was a place where the beach is so flat that basically the water was maybe two kilometers, a mile and a half from basically where we were at the beach line. And I didn't really want to walk that far to get out there, so. Well, we went even further and found some water in this town. I don't remember where we are, to be honest. But it's a very popular place. A lot of people here swimming, driving down to the beach, a little, you know, lunch huts and stuff. I don't know what you call them. I don't know. The water here is very shallow. It's literally a beer bottle floating by me. There are a bunch of car carcasses on the beach, fish carcasses. It looks like uh, Corvina. So I don't know if, how those got there. But. Fish this for maybe an hour unless the bite turns on. Don't know what to expect. Tide's coming in. High tide will be in about an hour and a half. Yeah, two hours away. Chartreuse and white EP bait fish. In effect. Buenos dias, thank you for watching this video. 
Uh, going to Mexico has been a dream of mine for a long time, and while it didn't work out exactly how I pictured in my mind, I still had an amazing time. You know, traveling down there was a long haul. It was a lot of fun getting to see all the countryside, get to adapt to some of the culture in Mexico. Uh, you know, there's a lot of poverty down there, and obviously the language barrier. I took three years of Spanish back in high school, but you know, it's not quite the same as actually being down there and trying to communicate with people. So that was super fun, super exciting. It was cool getting to see all the cactus, uh, you know, getting to see the Sea of Cortez, of course, uh, super amazing. It was always part of the plan to get on a boat and get out into some of that blue water and fish for some of the bigger fish uh, that you can't quite reach from the shore. But, you know, the plans didn't quite work out that way. So I spent the whole time fishing from the shore. Uh, and it was super fun. I mean, I got to see some Corvina jumping. Uh, I didn't know what they were at the time, but I was chasing Corvina from a couple spots off camera the first day. Um, and like I said, I, I threw all the flies I tied at them and I don't know exactly what I was doing wrong. I was stripping all the different ways. I was casting you know, in front of them. I could see them coming because it was really clear water. And it, you know, basically I was trying to fish you know, the flies in front of them and sort of strip them away, sort of in, induce a chase and uh, I couldn't get him to come. And like I said, I just got that one little tiny fish on the hook. Uh, I got him while stripping him back, barely felt him, but I was like, oh, I think there's something on here. It's either seaweed or a fish and stripped him back and got him. So, I mean, I was able to get some fish, uh, but not exactly what I was hoping to. You know, I really wanted to fight something big on that nine weight. And the first time I fished on like a white sandy beach, uh, I was kind of hoping that there would be like a little drop off there and there was, and I was hoping that I'd find some fish cruising up and down, you know, right before the, the shore would break. And not that there was really any surf there, but I've heard that the fish will cruise up and down the side of the, you know, those little drop-offs really close to shore. Uh, and I didn't get anything there except for that bite from a stingray. And let me tell you, that hurt a lot. It took two hours before the pain would sort of go away. Uh, it would sort of throb up really painful and then throb down and I was limping everywhere. It wasn't pretty, but uh, bad respect to anybody who's been bitten by a stingray. It does not feel good. Some of the other kinds of water I fished, I found a mouth to an estuary. So there was some structure, some rocks, and that's where I saw the Corvina cruising around, but just like looking for food. Um, I found in the estuary, kind of in the channel, uh, there were a bunch of bait fish jumping, and I did hook one of those also. Uh, I didn't get it back to the net, but I figured if there were some bait fish, there'd be some bigger fish there pursuing them, but that didn't, uh, that didn't pan out. And then the last day up north above Puerto Peñasca, I fished some very shallow, you know, white sandy beaches again. Uh, I saw some bait fish jumping, and I basically fished a couple flies. I, I just kind of fished a grid, casting out about 60, 70 feet, stripping it back different ways. Covered all that water pretty effectively. High tide was then, you know, almost all the way up by the end of the, that hour. And I was just like, well, I'm not gonna get uh, super frustrated here. I just fished for a little bit, and then we hit the road and head back home to California. But uh, like I said, I learned a lot. I mean, my casting stroke is a lot more comfortable now. Um, at the very beginning, I hooked myself in the forehead and on the back of the head. Uh, it wasn't pretty. Luckily, I was fishing barbless soaks, so they came right out. It didn't hurt that much, but it's embarrassing. Um, some of the things I learned there uh, is you want the fly rod over at a 45 degree angle instead of an overhead style cast, which I'm more used to. You know, that keeps the loops kind of on the side of you. And uh, basically, I found that watching my tip, just to get the timing to feel the load up at the right time, you know, give it, giving it time for the rod to load up was very important. And I got some of that timing dialed in. And to talk about this thing one more time, I got this rod from ColtonFly.com. I talked to Bob, I was hooked up to him through Mike Pawlowski. Uh, he basically specializes in salt, though he does have some freshwater gear. This is the Tail One XS rod, nine weight, nine foot long, and also the 10, 12 weight Terrapin reel. And this thing's got a buttery smooth drag. I was really disappointed that I didn't get anything big on it, so I couldn't work this drag out, but uh, Rest assured, I'm gonna get back out there on the salt. I'm gonna to try to hit up the coast here in Northern California. I know there's stripers out there, maybe some surf perch, maybe there's some other species I should target. Let me know down in the comments. But uh, there's also stripers in the Delta and on the Sacramento River. So uh, maybe I can get down there and fish for some stripers and some freshwater too. And uh, you know, this rod's pretty heavy, but you know, there's bass and there's a lot of stuff uh, I, can, I can target with this. So. This rod will not get put in the closet. I'm gonna keep using it. I had a lot of fun uh, fishing with it. So made in the USA, super high quality gear. Check it out, coltonfly.com or give him a call, talk to Bob. He'll get you set up and he's a really cool guy.
Well, this trip was super humbling, but it's just page one in the book of saltwater fly fishing for Eric here. So stay tuned. There's going to be more of these adventures in the future. And until then, everybody, see you on the water. Godspeed.